So my uh, third and uh, last uh, part uh, of uh, introduction to our meeting with Hypatia, with her uh, beautiful uh, thought and uh, um, uh, well, we don't have too many writings of her, but uh, the testimonies uh, which uh, I uh, presented in the first film and uh, which uh, you can find in the book by um, uh, Maria Dzielska in her many articles and also in very extensive uh, popular uh, literature and, and, and film, etc., uh, is um, actually only a pretext uh, to, to make our own ideas about what it uh, really means for us today to study this old history of uh, the ancient time of 4th and 5th century. In other words, uh, uh, my question is, and uh, perhaps your question uh, to today, uh, could be what we can learn from uh, Hypatia's uh, story and from many women in uh, human uh, history, which I already mentioned uh, in my uh, second uh, introductory reflections, uh, um, mentioning some uh, biblical figures. Uh, I just mentioned only a few, but there are many hundreds uh, of figures in, uh, in the Bible, uh, in both the Old and New Testament, and also in the books of history, in the life of saints. Uh, of course, literature is full of women, etc. So why, um, uh, why uh, this presence today is so... Um, discreet, I will say, why women are not playing a role um, corresponding to, her, to, to their contribution to, to our uh, heritage. This is the, a good question and I have to, to admit, uh, and I share with you my uh, lack of good answer, uh, because they are not a good answer. Uh, we, we, we can only wonder why for centuries, uh, for example, universities were closed uh, for women, why scientific laboratories were closed to women, why uh, Maria Skłodowska Kiri uh, has to uh, overcome many obstacles uh, in, in, in Poland, which in her time was not existing politically, and also it was not so easy in France. Uh, she was attacked, she was, uh, her life was not easy and, and so on. Uh, and we have uh, beautiful writers today, like uh, our Nobel Prize winner, Olga, Olga Tokarczuk. Uh, uh, I can think about many film directors as, uh, uh, Magdalena Szumowska, uh, Agnieszka Holland, uh, you know, having uh, so many women active in, uh, in, uh, in the culture, uh, for example, in politics uh, or in church institutions, uh, you don't have too, uh, too many. Why so? The same we, 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 we know from recent history. That for example, the very important uh, uh, political and social uh, cultural movement as uh, Solidarność in, in the 80s. Uh, so many women were important and uh, when finally uh, political uh, transformation uh, was done, uh, and when you look at the, go at the government, as the ministers, prime ministers, presidents, they are only men. So why so? Why is so uh, this discrepancy, this gap between the real contribution of women to, to our life and uh, uh, when it comes to the final result to consume uh, fruits? of uh, en engagement, of, of real hard work, uh, less and less women are visible, also in the media, and so on and so on. So um, 
I, I'm multiplying these questions also to provoke your own thinking, uh, both men and women. Let us think creatively. What, what is happening that in our European tradition, things are changing, of course. There are more and more women in, in politics. Uh, we take uh, Chancellor um, of Germany, uh, Angela uh, Merkel. Uh, we know that she played, uh, is, still is playing an important political role, not only in Germany, but also in uh, in European Union. Uh, we will have uh, a vice president, the first vice president, the woman of color, uh, who will be uh, changing, and Harris will influence, I'm sure, the politics of, of United States. So um, why uh, in certain uh, countries we see the growing role of women and in other like Poland not? And again, let us reflect upon and how uh, the figure uh, of uh, the life and work of Hypatia could help us in, in this. So first of all, I think, and I was not mentioning this aspect of Hypatia's life in my first and second uh, presentation, that uh, she was uh, a real partner to her father. Or, Put, we can reverse the relationship. Her father was encouraging her to study philosophy, although uh, in the fourth and fifth century it was not so obvious that uh, women could uh, play an important role. But because of parents, in this case, uh, her father was also a philosopher, a, a mathematician, and he saw that. He, his daughter is talented, so he encouraged her to, to pursue, to follow her uh, instinctive, uh, natural interest. So it's very important to start uh, when we are young, when the children uh, are demonstrating certain interests. So let us encourage them. So education, we will see uh, next time, uh, next week, uh, when uh, I will speak on uh, John Dewey, we will find a lot of elements uh, which um, encourage American women to, to follow uh, uh, a new path, uh, exactly uh, of uh, emancipation, of uh, partnership in, in family life, in public life, etc. So, we, we, we need to uh, be creative, not to be too um, shy in articulating our natural uh, approach to life, where we don't see this um, difference between men and women. And even, uh, even in the Catholic Church, uh, I see how uh, the present time and uh, the present Pope also the previous popes, but particularly Pope Francis is encouraging women to play more active role. He, he opened discussion on if the woman could be more uh, present in, in making decision in the church. He's inviting women to the Vatican. Uh, now is a, a discussion if uh, they could be a deacon or even priests. Uh, and I think this is a very encouraging uh, moment in, in, in our history that uh, women are encouraged to play more active role even in so um, traditional conservative institution as the Catholic Church. I don't have to, to say that uh, in uh, almost all Protestant churches we see women uh, being pastors, bishops, and of course uh, having a position of responsibility in the institution. So politics, religion, education, how many wonderful teachers we have in, in, at our university. So parity, uh, emancipation is something which is um, almost obvious today. Nobody has a, a problem in accepting uh, the presence of women everywhere. Um, because of uh, their uh, natural talents. So uh, I would say that this is the reason why uh, 
uh, Hypatia became so relevant for many feministic organizations even. So to come back to uh, Maria Dzielska, who uh, was a good friend of mine, and, and I, I uh, thanks her for opening my eyes for this um, feministic dimension in, in the philosophical thinking. She was conservative by, by political views, uh, but it has nothing to, we don't have to be divided, polarized, because we have different opinions. You, you can be progressive, you can be conservative, you can be uh, religious or non-religious, but what is important is the creative uh, ideas, mm -hmm. is courage to enter in, in dialogue with any uh, people who we came across, reading books, uh, being active in, in social media as you are. I'm sorry, I'm too conservative perhaps, I'm not able to to be active in, in social media, in Facebook, Twitter, etc. But it doesn't matter. What is important that whatever we do, that we have this open mind. And I think that uh, Hypatia was uh, so charismatic in her time because uh, she was really encouraging her students to, to follow their own inner um, a voice and uh, one uh, now is uh, his name is not coming to my mind but one of, of his student was uh, later became a bishop and he was uh, referring to Hypatia as the most important uh, source of inspiration in his life and in fact uh, the entire book by uh, Jelska is, uh, is a reconstruction of the possible friendship between uh, this bishop and, and uh, his uh, master, Hypatia, because he, all his life, he was writing letters to her, asking for advice, uh, consulting with her the most important uh, life problems. You see uh, that even uh, representatives of, of the leaders, uh, hierarchs, could find uh, a support of women in, in, in developing uh, good ideas, not polarizing ideas, not uh, exclude, uh, excluding others. Uh, so um, my uh, conclusion will be, let us uh, be more uh, courageous in following uh, testimonies from the past written by be beautiful, uh, wise uh, women who uh, contributed to the history of philosophy, but unfortunately we are not paying enough attention to uh, rediscover this forgotten heritage. And I would say, I would add that the same movement of rediscovery, of recuperation of this forgotten heritage left by women in the past, we observe in all possible directions. We see this in Islam, uh, we see this in Judaism, we see in many denominations of Christian tradition, and we see this also in secular culture. What is so beautiful that we have more and more women uh, uh, shaping our life, uh, shaping our uh, ideas and opening us to the more creative uh, future. And I'm sure that uh, in class uh, you will add to, to my poor introduction more ideas, more elements, and we will have a lovely exchange and I hope we'll be, I will be able to answer your questions. So I'm looking forward to, to see you in class on 7th of January.